Hi everyone, this is a, a little story and some information for you which I hope will help you. And it's about what I think is a probably unknown setting on the SEMA X8 and the X5 transmitters and whether it affects any other transmitters or not, I don't know. I bought an X8G quadcopter and behaved perfectly for every time I took it out. Uh, one time I took it out to a field which is just nearby me and uh, flying over to the left towards these trees seemed to start dropping out a couple of times you know when it was getting out of range and I thought it's a bit odd shouldn't be getting out of range at, uh, at that sort of close to me because normally it can fly quite a long way away uh, I think some guys tested it which I've seen on YouTube about 1300, 1500 feet. Um, didn't think too much of it, but basically lost control of it and it sort of dropped. I, I ended up dropping it just next to this tree. Um, read some issues about things like this and I read about people doing a uh, Wi Fi aerial mod on their SEMA transmitters and I have done the mod on my X8 transmitter which is quite nice this is a, a Wi-Fi aerial from uh, Amazon you get two in a pack very inexpensive I think they're about well less than 10 quid anyway and a little patch lead inside you can find some videos of how to um, do that on the internet and I thought that after that little blip maybe that was my problem so took the quadcopter out again same field flying and I found that when I went sort of a bit further down the field over to these trees quadcopter started dropping like it was losing um, signal so I decided maybe there's something around there that's affecting it I had previously had my mobile phone in my pocket with the Wi-Fi on and had read that that could affect it as well so made sure my mobile phone was on airplane mode um, still had this problem with the quadcopter dropping so decided to take my uh, quadcopter to a different part of the field over by the other side of um, this building um, there's also tarmac there as well so I took it over there flying it and still noticed a little bit of dropping out um, eventually flew the quadcopter was sort of above the tarmac and um, basically it just dropped sideways flew down and hit the deck and this is currently the situation that my X8G is in where it just basically sideways wound and dropped onto the floor okay um, new parts got some new parts on order and I'm thinking why why is this doing this it's, it's had a couple of accidents maybe there's something wrong with the receiver board um, not sure but just want to tell you about where I got my spare parts from so here is new quadcopter case that's the top half and that's the bottom half five quid from Banggood took a few weeks to get here but um, SEMA stickers in there and also motor covers they're the little motor covers and also in there because it's a change of colour battery cover and LED light covers because certainly under that section the LED cover kind of got second prize okay um, also from Banggood is a receiver board and I also took the opportunity got a set of motors just for spares in case I need them okay in the meantime I found 
a sort of briefly mentioned um, feature on a uh, forum whereby you can switch the transmitter into low power mode and I'm good, just going to show you how to do that so I've tried this on my X8 and my X5 SEMA controller and I'm going to show you now what I found and this is why my quadcopter crashed so you can see the uh, signal meter in the top left of the display is like showing a maximum number of bars if you hold up the left trim button switch on the transmitter and go through binding you will then see the signal indication strength meter whatever you want to call it is flashing and I found that my transmitter was in this mode and that is why I only had about I'll say 15 meters of range very little range about 100 feet at the maximum here's my X5 controller and it works exactly the same so this trim button hold that up switch it on go through binding and there you will see the signal meter is flashing that transmitter is now in low power mode and you, the most you will get out of it is about 100 feet now why would SEMA do this? why would SEMA have this feature? And the only thing that I can um, figure out that it might be is because of maybe indoor flying and if you get a number of people flying indoors in a big hall or something like that maybe they have the um, low power feature so as not to have too many too strong signals flying around the place and you have trouble binding with different models if you turn the transmitter off and on again bind it does not go away until you repeat the process so I'd mistakenly or unknowingly got this feature enabled on my X8 quad which is how I ended up crashing it okay so to reverse the process switch the transmitter off hold up the left trim button turn on bind and there it is no longer flashing the transmitter is now in high power mode and you will have regained your 1500 feet or whatever the range is if I go back to my X8 transmitter turn it off turn it on go through binding and there you can see it's still flashing okay so turn the camera up a bit turn it off hold up the, the trim button for forward and back so it's that action so it's this trim button push it up turn it on go through binding and now you will see on there that is now solid okay so that transmitter is now in high power mode I have my new Wi-Fi aerial connected which is quite a neat job and so when I get my quadcopter rebuilt with my new parts I should be good to go I just wanted to say I think that it's pretty incredible when you see how big this thing is I mean you can see from my finger sort of thing how big this thing is there are some components on both sides but not many but um, I go, I'm going back to the 70s and the early 80s when I used to race radio control cars um, obviously we used to have a, a receiver in there with some uh, analog uh, servos but when you consider what is on this board and what it does I just thought I'd mention it and I think it's pretty incredible we've basically got some 
main power into this board we've got four MOSFET controllers for varying the voltage to the motors to give you your stability. On this board we have a 2.8 gigahertz receiver system which receives signals from the transmitter and basically does something with those signals which uh, obviously six axis controller so there's there's a 2.84 gigahertz receiver on here um, with the outputs from there to control the different functions be it camera LED or the motors obviously giving you your travel what we've also got on here is a magnetic sensor for the Earth's magnetic field so it knows which way it's pointing and that's for the headless mode and we've also got a gyroscope sensor so that the quadcopter knows which way it's tilting and knows which motors to speed up slow down so that it can keep it flying level and then obviously the controllers for the motor and we've got the connections on here for the four motors and all the LEDs that's on the quadcopter so I just thought I'd show you that because I, when I received it in the post I was quite amazed and I thought about how small that is and I suppose it just goes to show you how small they can make quads when you consider how big that is and how little space it could take up depending on what shape it needed to be inside the quad so there you go I hope that has helped you out um, if you've had any low power issues with your SEMA quad um, both these transmitters are now back into high power mode because the um, symbol for the Wi-Fi is solid. I uh, wish I'd known it a little bit earlier so that I didn't end up with a quad like that. So thank you for watching.